So a lot of you have asked about my follow-up on my, I believe it was April when I did a video on supply chain interruptions and in pertaining to buying a mountain bike. So I wanted to do a follow-up video and give you a look at what has happened, uh, what I'm seeing in the supply chain side of things for bikes, but also get you a moment or get, let you check out the bike I did end up buying. So as a review, I've demoed a Yeti SB130 up in Birmingham uh, at a shop uh, in Birmingham and I loved it and I went and went in and said, hey, I wanna buy this bike. Um, can I place an order and when can you have it? He says, yeah, we're taking orders, but you're sort of in line and uh, it'll be probably about 12 months before you get it. And I went, what? Why? And he says, they're all sitting in China. There's a supply chain interruption because of COVID. So I was like, well, hold that thought. And I called around to a bunch of bike shops in uh, the Southeast and basically came up with the same answer until I found a shop in Boulder, Colorado, which is about 1500 miles away from me or 24 hour drive that had 12 of them. And so I immediately got one and I also bought one for my wife. And so at the beginning of June, we went to Sporting Garage in Boulder, Colorado, and I picked up my Eddie Yeti SB130. Now, this is a carbon fiber bike. Um, it's a higher end mountain bike, and it's something I'd been saving up for for quite a while. And because of my retirement from the financial planning world, it gave me opportunity to reinvent myself to an extent, specifically when it came to my physical mobility and getting back on a mountain bike. And I was like, you know, I'm gonna buy one bike that I'll last a long time and I'll get a great deal of enjoyment out of, but also more importantly, it will grow, it, I can grow into it in a sense. So I've been riding about two, three days a week. Here in Florida, it's just a bear in a sense. Uh, hopefully I won't see that black bear that actually followed me uh, last week. Um, but, and if we do, it'll be pretty cool if it got on a video. But anyways, what has happened in the bike industry? So we showed up on the 11th, I believe, June at Sporting Garage in Boulder, Colorado, and Dan was the man. And he, he made the comment, I don't, he's like, I don't know what you triggered, but all of a sudden we started selling out of our inventory within a weeks of you calling and reserving your two bikes. And I was like, that's interesting. Um, and he's like, now we're down to a point where we have a very, very limited supply in particular of the Yetis. And it was, you know, and, and it supply chain sides of things was not um, getting any better. Fast forward to an article I read in the Wall Street Journal yesterday about, um, I'm gonna butcher the name of this port in China, but it's the third biggest port in China. It's called uh, Hindu, uh, which is a freighter, a port where freighters come up and they pick up um, the merchandise that's manufactured over there and they bring it to Europe and the United States. Well, they closed their port because of one case of COVID. And now it being the third biggest port, which they usually do furniture, toys, bigger goods, is now in lockdown. And there are roughly 40 ships sitting off the coast of this port in China waiting to onload the things that you and I will buy around Christmas time, if it shows up. And unfortunately, it hasn't shown up yet, which brings me around to number one, if you got your Christmas list already for your kids and your family members, you may wanna start buying it now because the supply come Dece November, December, like a lot of us, including myself, forget to do our Christmas shopping until last minute, need to start thinking about buying those goods now. But two, what is the effect of all this supply chain interruption that we're seeing now out of China? And then we also saw that with the Suez Canal, I believe that was in May and June, if I remember correctly, and that interruption. And if we continue to see this interruption of supply chain, what does it mean 
for the mountain bike industry? What does it mean for the toy industry? What does it mean for all these goods that Walmart and Amazon sell if they can't get them? And what you're finding, or what I'm reading is, Walmart and Amazon, I believe, have chartered their own freighters to go get a lot of this stuff because of this shutdown. And so maybe there will be supply because they're taking alternative routes. But what happens to the, the shipping companies and the container companies who are sitting there without goods, without product to bring over because they're waiting on these ports to open? And then once they do open up, what happens to that delay? Do you do an IOU at Christmas? I mean, what happens to the, bring this all the way down from the manufacturer of the product all the way down to the distributor, down to the special, you know, the small shops. How do they survive if this supply chain interruption continues to be a problem?